Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Season 2, Episode 12 of The Owl House. So last time we returned with The Owl House in a very, very great way. Um, got a very big episode for the premiere of Se Season 2B. And we have a new coven leader who we find out is brainwashing Rain. Unfortunately, we're unable to save them, and it's it's not great. But more information is given as we find out that Bellos' plan is moved up. Things are going quicker than we expected, and things are about to get serious, uh, especially with Bellos revealing his face to everyone, and basically planning this utopian future which as we know is not going to be as nice as he's trying to make it sound um so yeah it's it's going to be interesting um especially with the fact that we're obviously not getting a lot more of this series following season two because of you know, Disney canceling it and only giving the crew a short amount of, you know, shit to work with. And it really, really does suck. And it just goes to show that, yeah, Disney has a lot of work to do. And not only in this case, but in a lot of cases. And it's the reason why there was the entire walkout and everything. Um, and people saying Disney do better. I'm not going to get into all of that here, but it's like Disney, with its with representation towards the queer community, needs to do better. Um, and even Pixar employees and stuff are making statements about this. It's just like, hopefully one day we'll get to that point. But it's going to be a lot of work, and it's going to be... It's not going to be easy. Because unfortunately, nothing worth fighting for ever seems to be. Even if it should be. But anyways. Anyways. Like I said, I'm excited to see what happens and where this goes. Um, I'm sure we're still going to get some episodic stuff mixed in here. But I think it's probably going to be a, a lot like Gravity Falls, where in the second season, even though there was some episodic stuff, it did very much progress things a lot quicker, a lot faster, a lot just heavier than season one did. Um, I, I feel it's going to be a lot like that, which is a good thing. It's like still have some of that episodic stuff, some of those wacky shenanigans, um, but also continue to progress things in a much more, like, strong manner than you had in the previous season and honestly with the season three we're getting which were basically just specials i believe there's going to be it's either three or six i think um but they're all going to be double length with those season three specials we're going to get though it's like all of those obviously are going to be very to the point <laughs> they have to be um, but yeah, I'm, again, I'm excited to see what we get going forward with these episodes, and I'm just hoping that, uh, the crew does the best they can with what they're being given and what they're being allowed, so. Yeah, we're just gonna get this started and hope for the best. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after fades black, then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction.
and we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. I was not expecting another massive episode like this. I, I, I was thinking they were going to go back into some more episodic stuff. What if this entire second half of the season is just non-stop insanity? What if it's just continuous, um, big, important shit going on? For 10 or so episodes, I think 11 technically, um, that would be insane. And I know, like, they might have to kind of brush certain things and all and not get to as many um, episodic things because of, you know, having the series shortened and all, but still, that would be insane. Uh, it's just, you come back off of hiatus and now two episodes in a row both have been huge. And we, we waited for six months and we're just being treated here. I was not expecting to see Philip like in the flesh or possible confirmation that he is Belos um because it seemed like he he was absorbing the palismans like we know Belos is doing and we saw that he had some issues going on some physical probably magic created issues so it's it's either trying to tell us here that Belos and Philip are the same person or that possibly Belos is his brother and that um, the same thing that happened to Philip is now happening to him. Those are like, I think, the only real two conclusions we can gather from this. Um, that's, that's all I can see, at least. I mean, I, I don't know for sure, though. But we find out a lot of information this episode, and I'm, I'm going to talk about the B-plot part first, although... Calling it a B-plot when it was also very important feels weird. But we're going to talk about that stuff first. So, Ida. Um, while Luz and Lilith go off, Ida is confronted by her the return of her father. She hasn't seen him in 20-plus years and is afraid to because of what happened back in the day. As we know, when she went owl beast, she hurt him. She injured him very badly and it caused some major problems. So, Ida has been feeling very bad about that, as we know, and as we see in this episode, she's not gotten over that. She tries to escape, tries to run away from her father, but eventually realizes she can't and she needs to confront this, and so she does. She talks to him, she um, admits how terrible she feels about everything and how guilty she, she feels she is. And her father just, he just talks to her. He acknowledges that what she had done, but it, he makes it very clear that he never really held it against her. And that even today he's just moving on from that and that he wants her to as well we find out i don't think this was mentioned before but we find out he uh made palismans and he has a connection with the bat queen as well and we find out here that ever since the incident he hasn't been able to make any because you know his he's had shaking and unsteadiness and whatnot just due to everything that happened he's just been unable to but he now passes it on to her and it's very clear where that's headed it's it's headed towards Luz's palisman we know she's getting one that's very obviously going to happen and we can see where this is going with this entire setup uh, but we see through this that uh, Ida is finally able to let go of that uh, trauma in her life, and she's finally able to move on. Um, it, it's a it's even though it's clearly the 
the quote-unquote B-plot of the episode, it's still very important to Ida's character and it's just a really big moment. Uh, so, so I really, really did love seeing that. Um, and then we have just everything else. So Lilith is visiting. They're having a party because she's been promoted to a new job. Um, basically, she's going to be a, his a historian working for this museum and all. Uh, and her old mentor is there to deliver some of her things and wish her luck, basically, while also telling her, uh, the Emperor's Coven, they we're keeping an eye on you. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, and Lilith ends up being convinced by Luz to search for these magical time pools that are, well, they're just portals into different time periods. Um, Luz wants to find them to find out more and possibly meet, uh, Philip Wittebane. And, well, Lilith wants to find them just because she's kind of adorably geeky and is into that kind of stuff. Um, plus, Luz convinces her that it could help her with, you know, her museum job and everything. So, they go out and do manage to find them and go into the, uh, go into the distant past, where very quickly they do meet Philip. And again, this caught me so off guard and was so just mind-blowing. I did not expect this to happen at all. But they met Philip, and agreed to help him and help work with him on finding this collector. And it's soon revealed that he's not the best person. Um, which, which there was definitely hints at, and I, it was kind of in the back of my mind. I was thinking like, okay, there's some, there's some things here and there that aren't quite adding up. You could say like the fact that he's like, oh, I have this spell that'll take us right to the collector but you know i supposedly needed help finding the collector also there was the entire thing about uh those two uh ogres like oh ask him what happened to our brother blue fang and it's like th there's these little hints here and there that are telling us that there's something off and so when we get to the where the collector supposedly is in the uh skull of the titan we find out that he had been using them and planned to use them as sacrifices to distract this uh, stone layer beast. I think that's what it was called. Um, or stone sleeper, maybe? Something like that. Um, so he could get through. And I guess, unfortunately, when he tried to do this with the ogres and with uh, Blue Fang, it didn't work quite as well as he hoped. Um, he, he even mentioned, like, I hope you last longer than Blue Fang. Like, I, I guess Blue Fang didn't last long, and that's why he couldn't get to the mirror he was looking for in time. Um, so yeah, Luz and Lilith are able to stop it, uh, mostly Luz, because she listened to Lilith, but Philip manages to get away with the mirror, but after, he, um, no, wait, I think it's after this, um, but I'll just say it here. He does reveal that the, he didn't get the mirror to return to his own world. That, the, that he got it for something else. That he was looking for the collector for something else. And I'm really curious about that. I wonder if it has to do with his brother at all. Um, and, and like even like as well, he, he was also told by Luz like, it's not worth, uh, nothing is worth, like, sacrificing people. And he was like, oh, I disagree. And it's like, so whatever he's doing here, I'm thinking it's probably, in his eyes, very important. So I'm wondering what he needs the collector for. Um, but they do manage to catch back up with Philip. Um, Lilith just decks him in the nose, which it's like, fuck yeah, Lilith. <laughs> And they head back to their own time, reconvening with Ida. And we finish off seeing the scene with Philip um, absorbing the palisman and calling on the collector. 
so holy fuck <laughs> are, are we just going to continue getting this huge shit like this was so massive of an episode this was so important and it was just it was so good too like even outside of just the fact that yeah obviously it's important to the overarching story it was really good it was enjoyable it kept me excited at, at, at the edge of my seat um lilith is just an absolute boss in this episode she's amazing and just insanely likable like yeah they've already made lilith likable in the first half of the season before she headed out to live with uh, her mother and all again um they, they already did really well at making her a lot more likable um after season one and everything but this episode is just I, this was peak lilith for me like this was lilith at her best at the most adorable the most just badass the coolest um definitely cool aunt there um she's just she's awesome um and speaking of the entire family thing i love that uh ida and them and all are referring to king as like ida's son basically and that uh that that king is like calling ida's father his grandfather and all. that's just super cute and i love how everyone's just accepting of it like even ida's mom even gwendolyn's like oh yeah yeah he's your grandfather <laughs> And, and then her dad later on is like, I heard I have a grandson now. And Ida's like, yeah, King's a, King's a Clawthorn. And it's like, this is just cute. <laughs> like, this is just super cute. I love this. Um, but yeah, like, this was definitely a highlight episode for Lilith, for sure. Um, but the, the important, huge stuff we got in it was just, it was so good. It was so well done. And the fact that Philip isn't just this virtuous, good person, I like that too. Because, honestly, that's kind of what it's been almost saying so far. Outside of the theories the fandom has had regarding him being uh, Bellos and all, it's like, the series has been kind of making it like, oh, Luz looks up to him. He's like this other human who had been in the Boiling Isles before, she wants to know more about him. And everything it's like we're kind of seeing through this this lens of of loses positivity and excitement and so we're automatically kind of seeing philip as like this good guy or at the very least as this character who we can like side with in regards to his struggles and worries and everything but then in this this episode completely turns out on its head and it's like oh no philip was kind of an asshole <laughs> he was kind of a dick bag who was willing to sacrifice others lives for his own goals it's like ah yeah he might be bellows <laughs> i could see it um god this was just so damn good and it just makes me more excited for the future, like for what else is going to happen. Like the other big reveals that we're going to eventually get, the other just huge moments and episodes. It's like, <sighs> excuse me. If this is a sign of things to come, season 2B is going to be phenomenal. And I'm all here for it. So, yeah, in the meantime, tell me in the comments below, what did you think of episode 12 of The Owl House Season 2? And thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. What am I doing here? See you all next time. <laughs>